Hi everybody, you are listening to 31 Days of Horror, a series of blogs and podcasts where every day for 31 days from October the 1st till October the 31st, you will be taken on a ride through 31 film experiences, unlike the typical list of movies that you come to expect from the Halloween season. This is the first film of 31, Starry Eyes. Now, this is a film directed by Kevin Kolsch, Dennis Widmere. came out in 2014 and stars Alex Esso, Amanda Fuller, Noah Sagan, and Fabian Therese. A hopeful young starlet uncovers the ominous origins of the Hollywood elite and enters into a deadly agreement in exchange for fame and fortune. What um, the description just failed to uh, acknowledge is that... Um, this there's some satanic stuff going on in this and it's uh it's quite a thrill ride and alex esso is incredible in this role so um this is the first film of october and coming up next is the review with andy lewin we've watched this film before so there's new stuff that we're talking about um from the first time we talked about it a lot has changed since 2014 and i think this film has a lot of relevance to, uh, to what's going on in the world today. 31 Days of Horror is officially sponsored by Infernal Imagery. Visit infernalimagery.com throughout October 2018 and receive 20% off your purchases by using the offer code 31 days. Today's tea of the day is Josh Latter's Mansion Mouse. What happened there? I don't know. Who are you? Hmm. That's off a code 31 days for 20% off at infernalimagery.com. So let's get to it. This is Andy Lewin and myself talking about Starry Eyes. Hello and welcome. This is 31 Days of Horror. We're going to be looking at 31 films over 31, 31 days. days. Yes. So to my left is Andy Lewin. Hello. How are you feeling, Andy? I'm feeling spooky. Spooky? Yeah. That's a good thing to spooky. feel. Yeah, like, like Mulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, spooky Mulder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, why, that's why I'm wearing a suit. I'm feeling Skinner. Oh. <laughs> but he's not very happy about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're not back doing frame by frame. This is a completely different podcast. We're going to be running through um all 31 movies that are a part of a blog on Medium. And um, every day... A new blog will drop, a new movie. And these are alternative horror movies. These are movies that you don't expect to have in any classic list. Isn't no, it? not exactly mainstream. Well, no. some of them are, I would say. Some yeah. of them are mainstream, but they're mm. more niche. Yeah, and I think that they're probably mainstream like 10 years ago, but now this generation of kids, they've kind of like got all their sore movies that are just, you know, crazy things like that. Yeah, that, I feel sorry for those people. I know, because they don't know... You know, they don't know what they're missing. Well, they'll watch The Wicker Man now and go, huh. Yeah, where, a where, where, where did it jump? Where was the jump scares? The, yeah. yeah you know, they'll watch Straw time. Dogs and say, well, crying is foreplay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't get an erection unless you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a good start. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so the first film, it's the 1st of October. 1st of October. 2018. My birthday is seven days. <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> get that in the first episode. Yeah. And um, the film we're going to be talking about is Starry Eyes. Yes. So we've reviewed Starry Eyes before. We have. And we really, really liked it. It was. Um, it came out in 2014. And uh, we couldn't wait to actually get into this one. Because it was one of those uh, films where we, we, when we watched it, we thought, this has got to become a classic. This yeah, has got to become absolutely. one of those films. Everybody's got to watch this. And it seems to have turned into people who are really horror geeks mm. 
they know about it. Yeah. But it never really got the traction I think it deserved. No, and uh, that's why I wanted it in the list. I wanted it in the list because people need to watch this movie. Um, And that's why it's first. Because if you can start your Halloween season with this movie, then you're on for a good run. Yeah, yeah. Everything else will be a complete letdown. So all this vague hyperbole that we've just been throwing in, <laughs> like uh, like we know what we're saying. Um, it was directed by Kevin Kolsch who, and um, and also Dennis Widmere. Yeah, who, who is, follows you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he's a decent, decent enough guy. You know, we, great guy. I think he's in touch with his fan base. Yeah, yeah. and uh, stars um, Alex Esso um, as the uh, ill-fated actress wannabe actress who is amazing in this. She is. I liken it to um, the performance in Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Oh, do you know what? I never actually, we never actually alluded to that before. That's, yeah, it was uh, uh, watching it again for this made me think it's just that level of intensity. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's really, really good. And since, I think she's only really done B-movie horror. Mm. And she's kind of stuck in the horror but market. Maybe, but, I mean, to yeah. be able to give a performance like that. Maybe she's comfortable in that. I mean, we all, you know, design the path, or is it? Do you think she's typecast now? But, I don't know. She maybe. might be comfortable. Maybe she's comfortable. Maybe she's comfortable. Maybe she's. Let's say she's happy. Well, she's working. Oh, exactly. Yeah. She she can go to Comic Con whenever she wants without worrying too much. You well, know. This film is more. <laughs> yeah, that's an advantage. Yeah, yeah. This film is more relevant, I think, now with all the Weinstein stuff. Oh and... yeah, and when we were doing the podcast before, it really didn't mean that much no you know? you know you kind of got the idea of the ugly underbelly of hollywood but it really gets this yeah this is kind of what that. you what you the, the wildest nightmare and you you kind of know that this stuff happens yeah it, it's very heavy-handed isn't it because yeah like they don't take any notice of her at all until she's physically hurting herself and no, they're like no. oh, right that's what we want for this part yeah yeah we want someone who you can who's who can damaged yeah who can be controlled? Who can be coerced? Who can be turned and changed? Yeah. Modeled and uh, it's it's akin to trafficking, really. It's just uh, another way of another form of trafficking, but yeah. for Satan. Yeah. Well, do you think all the mm. occult symbolism was pegged on as a way to make it into a horror film, as, to, uh, as opposed to it just being a film about a girl who wants to make it, mm. does the wrong things to make it? It's an interesting point because it it was not necessarily didn't have to be satanic, but it kind of is. Yeah. And so, in order to kind of take away that the the whole Weinstein kind of feel to it, to make it sound, you know, then it probably was just added. Yeah, because um, essentially she needs to sleep with the producer to get the part, hmm. which she won't do at first, mm-hmm. and then does. <laughs> well, she doesn't sleep with him does she 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 fights him off i think oh she gives him a bit of the old oh yes bit the old bit the old bj as they call him on the streets the old bj her. on yeah. the street and then her mouth starts to go all septic doesn't it and she oh. gets really ill and that's when yeah it's it's a really good climax <laughs> not that... <laughs> uh, is there another word for it good build up <laughs> to the release um, yeah good release um <laughs> the big finish um <laughs> So immature, but yeah, it's it's definitely it's one to watch. Um, it's it's one to watch more than once. You can comfortably just sit there every year and watch this. I oh, I, I definitely want to yeah. say that this is one of those films that should be a Halloween classic, a sit down classic every yeah. year. Yeah, and you see different things in it every time. Yeah, exactly. You really do. Very late, and it also, like you say, it's very relevant now. To the but but when we watched it then it was relevant in a different way. Yeah, I think we took from it the mm. the Satanism stuff, the yeah. you know the horror elements we took from it. Yeah. But now, obviously, last year the Me Too movement and all that, and and yeah. watch it again now, and it does work on a different level now. Yeah. So watch it for that reason as well. I mean, if you've got both, you know, it's a, it's a moral tale. It's so, well, yeah, it's a moral tale. But not a how to. <laughs> No, definitely cautionary. Don't do what she does. Very cautionary. But, and if you're a fan of Gore, you've got a little bit of that in there. When she smashes that guy's face in. That's you know, not not to give too much away. Um, there are moments where she just doesn't want to give up on this one person. No, she, she keeps coming back. Yeah, to, she's to, enjoying a good old smash. Yeah, just and then just you know, there's a, a bit of stabbing to begin with, 
and then she comes back and then she does a bit more and then it's the big finish and yeah. it's like yeah um so yeah kudos to that because you never you don't really see that in halloween where michael myers just kind of butchers a, a teenager then in a few minutes he thinks oh do you know what i ought to just come in and just just maybe de decapitate her a little bit to cut her limbs and then come back a bit later and go mm. that head really shouldn't be on that that neck well, let's just let's just yeah, go let's back and just really it was it. kind of like that scene in Hatchet. I don't know if you've seen Hatchet. Mm, no. Um, but it's, it's it's not very good. But it has this scene where he's got this like housewife tied up and he just taps her on the side of the head with mm -hmm. something and then taps her again. She's like crying and he taps her again. Uh... She's crying and she starts tapping her a little bit harder and harder and harder until the point where he's just mashing her face off. It, it, it's just this part where he slips into CGI ruins it. Not that it's nice to watch anyway. I'm not saying that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. It's I'm probably not... that's that sounds like one of those things, like the uh, the biting of the curb in uh, American History X and the uh, oh, the, the gun face yeah. cave in in uh, Pan's Labyrinth. It's the kind of thing that that really, as a horror fan, I prefer the psychological. Yeah, what you absolutely. don't see, yeah. rather than what you do see. But it's you know it's uh, this this I can actually just go. Yeah, okay, I needed to see this. This was right. Well, you're showing that she gone now she's mm, yeah. completely gone she, oh, yeah. you know she she's on this course she's murdering people now but none of her friends were particularly the nice to her in the film are they no they were very distant you know yeah, even, even when she vicious. was yeah vicious but also very you know like uh, even when she's in crisis they're not mm. that bothered they're just kind of like go oh, they don't want to touch it that which is we we kind of alluded that that was probably how it was you know, for you know the the competitive side, they're waiting for yeah, they're waiting for a part. Oh, you've got your part, well done. You're not going to get it. Yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. And there's waiting. And they want them to self destruct because you know there's there's more of an there was an alpha female thing going on with those with those mm. girls, and the guys seem to be the most sympathetic though. They're the ones that chased after her, and we wondered if that was you know because she's attractive. Because she's attractive, or is it because uh, they actually have a nurturing. Who knows? So, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what it doesn't really it doesn't really say, does it? No. The one guy that she seems to like is with her friend anyway. Yeah. Who living out in that van in the garden. That's it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's um so there we have it. I mean it's um it's definitely worth worth watching. I'd highly recommend that film to yeah, yeah anyone. Can't say that. Eighteen overwards. Yeah. Eighteen upwards, not overwards. <laughs> So there we have it, and now um, that's so that's it for for day one. Yeah, it was well, it, that was, was painless. Was it worth three quarters of an hour drive just to come here and do ten minutes? Yeah, oh, you telling me? Of course it was. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll go. I'll go off home now. Okay, and then see you tomorrow. That's it. See you tomorrow. Okay, same place. Bye. Different, different clothes. <laughs> bye bye. Now for a word from our sponsor. 31 Days of Horror is officially sponsored by Infernal Imagery. Visit infernalimagery.com throughout October 2018 and receive 20% off your purchases by using the offer code 31DAYS. Today's tea of the day is Josh Latter's Mansion Mouse. What happened there? I don't know. Who are you? Hmm. That's offer code 31 days for 20% off at infernalimagery.com.